There's one common goal we all share from a very young age, that being, get rich buddy. Now this desire manifests itself in many ways, from grinding at a minimum wage job for 8 hours a day, 5 days a week, from the moment you're able to walk, to becoming a rapper or any type of artist, no matter how garbage the music you make is, or even becoming a professional athlete. Now all of these are great options and all require an immense amount of hard work. The last two in particular are extremely hard to achieve and very few make it successful in their field. Unfortunately today I won't be talking about hard work and dedication and making someone into a wealthier person at all, but the exact opposite, making money off of blind luck. Sports gambling. Now before we get into this situation deep enough, we need to all put on our big boy pants and realize that I'm not promoting sports gambling or anything of that nature, and simply talking about my thoughts on it. Gamble at your own risk brothers and sisters. Good luck. Alright, now to continue. I was the type of person that believed I would go my whole life without gambling in general, and thought I was the brightest crayon in the box because I made the biggest discovery of this generation, realizing that gambling only exists because the people in charge make money on it. Which obviously means you shouldn't gamble, and for the longest time, I didn't. I mean, I was slaving away for dimes at a time while going to school. I didn't want to throw all my hard work in the drain. I had B-words to impress, I had clothes to buy, and shoes I wanted. And most importantly, spend half of what I earned on food because I'm a fat ass and never picked up the basic life skill on how to cook, even though I handle food all day. But obviously, since I'm making this video, that means I decided to partake in it at some point. Now you're probably all wondering, what was the trigger to make me want to gamble? And I'll tell you. It was all of these damn prize picks and FanDuel ads on YouTube. Now, in the off chance I ever get to the point where prize picks wants to sponsor my videos or FanDuel, none of you have seen this. This video never existed and will never exist again. Now, my journey into sports gambling was one of immaturity because after I wiped my eyes of the tears that I had because of seeing how low my bank account was, I had to lock in my first bet. Now, would you like to know what my first bet was? A $60 six leg parlay. Okay, I was greedy and naive, don't kill me. I put $100 of my fast food slave paycheck and got a match to $200 and this was the first bet I made. And on the bright side, my bet actually hit. I went 5 for 6 and I doubled my money. I would have made 1500 but I took the over on Damian Lillard and forgot. Whenever you take the over on someone, they turn into a professional player of the Wong Dong Tigers and promptly get ready to switch careers to DoorDash driving. Now flipping $60 into $120 is not bad, but I got the gambler's drive off my first win and I was ready to get a lick of being rich. So the next day, before I clocked into work, I placed about 6 different bets, all about $50, and prayed to my card that they were going to hit. I slaved away and checked my break to see what was happening. I lost. All but a 2 and 3 leg parlay. Were my gambling days behind me, I thought. Then I remembered a certain picture. I clocked back into work and knew these last two were going to hit. I just had a feeling. I put everything on the line so I knew it was going to work. I slaved away, went on to my 30 minute break, and I jumped. They both hit. I then proceeded to gloat in the group chat about my immense ball knowledge and promptly went to withdraw the money I earned, which was $400, meaning I turned a 300 profit within a day. I went to sleep with a satisfying feeling in my heart and slept as snug as a bug in a rug, on God, knowing I would never touch sports gambling again. The end. Why is there still more time on the video? It all went downhill from there. I added $100 back into my account the next day since it was profit money and continued down a long, dark road. I lost all of it on two $50 bets, then I dropped another $100, this time using it more conservatively, and again, lost all of it. I added slowly now, only $50, and then I hit again, turned it into $150. My ego came back, and I bet so many small bets that I didn't even keep track anymore. I was betting on shit I had no idea about, like League of Legends. I never touched that game, I never watched the professional scene, but I damn well bet on it. I would religiously go on Twitter and google the best picks for sports I didn't even watch. I was out here betting on men's cricket. I don't even know how you play that sport. I was betting on field hockey. I was betting on CSGO. All of which I had no clue about, which led to mostly losses, but CSGO actually hit on a few times, I'm not gonna lie. I'm not encouraging it, but you know, I actually hit, because I looked it up on Twitter. And speaking of Twitter, you should follow my Twitter. It's Rised23. And I'll post updates on videos there, and I drop banger tweets like this once in a while. So yeah, give that a follow. But anyways, like all good things, I lost it. That $150, I never saw it again. And it started a vicious cycle of me adding money into my account to make money, only to lose all of it. Which unfortunately, I'm still stuck in to this very day. Although, you know, it's, it's a smaller amount of money now. And all I can say after all of that betting, all of that losing, is 
betting the over on De'Aaron points in the playoffs is a lock every single time. Put the deed to your house on De'Aaron over 25 and a half points. Okay, obviously I'm joking. The message is gamble in moderation. Don't spend a lot of money on it. Don't put all your eggs in one basket, you know. Everything that you should know, but regardless, still partake in. Another point of gambling I'd like to talk about is how much more attentively I'd be watching these games. Before gambling, the only NBA games I'd really tune into is the Sacramento Kings regularly and big games like the top two seeds going at it. Or if there was a monumental moment like this season, LeBron beating Kareem's scoring record. But ever since I started gambling, I would tune into the most random games, like the Charlotte Hornets versus the Houston Rockets or the Spurs versus the Detroit Pistons. To be honest, I could care less for any player seeing the floor that night. For all I care, I could have been watching a pickup game at my local Planet Fitness. The only thing that matters when I watch those games is that the player I took the over on was cooking, and the player I took the under on was getting ready to speak some Cantonese. Now a big question that gets asked because of thoughts similar to mine is, are sports suffering because of gambling? And in my opinion, without a doubt, but hey, what are you going to do about it? Now usually this is the part of the video where I like to get inspirational and give some sort of message, but I feel that inspirational wouldn't be the best thing to say at the end of a video talking about an addiction. So instead, I would like for us to count our blessings. No matter how down our lives may be at the moment, there's so much to be appreciated for, despite how negative everything seems to be in the moment. Look around at what makes you happy and what you love, and I guarantee you'll be able to see something at least slightly more positive in contrast to the way you've been seeing everything else. And on that note, I think it's time I take my own advice. Thank you so much for a thousand subscribers. I knew that as long as I applied myself, it was only a matter of time before I saw success within anything I decided to partake in. But I would have never expected to see success this quick. Sincerely, all of the comments that I saw talking about how underrated I am even though I have two videos out and you know, even within those videos there's a lot of errors and inconsistencies and things that I really want to improve on in the future. Still, despite all of that, people were saying that I just need to keep going. All I can say is, sincerely, thank you. There's more to come.